Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Congratulations to the most avoided, the most feared, and pound for pound top three, one of the best fighters in the entire world, Mr. Guillermo Rigondeaux. This man, TKO Dickens, in the second round, with one single punch. And the reason why I really emphasize on saying one single punch is this was the first left hand that Guillermo landed in the entire fight. And he broke this man's jaw with one punch to where this man could not continue after two rounds. You know, first of all, I want to say I just got done watching the fight right now because I just got back from Alabama covering the Wilder versus uh, Ariola fight. So I just got done watching it and it was very impressive. It was very impressive. We may have to reevaluate who we believe are some of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing. Because Guillermo Rigondeaux's left hand is no damn joke. He damn near broke uh, Nonito Donaire's eye socket with that left hand. He just broke this man's jaw with that left hand. On top of that, Guillermo Rigondeaux, he has three knockouts in his last four fights. So three knockouts in his last four fights means decafs can no longer use these silly ass excuses why they don't like Guillermo Rigo because he doesn't get knockouts. The majority of Guillermo Rigondeaux's fights end in a knockout. And even the, the guys that he didn't knock out, he knocked them down with one single punch. And that is the left hand. Rigo can hurt you to the body with that left hand. He can hurt you to the head with that left hand. This fight in particular, it reminds me of one of those movies where you got the badass, you know, the dude kicking everyone's ass and he's just making it look so damn easy. He just casually beats motherfuckers up, right? In this fight right here, I think of those movies where you got the one guy, he's just avoiding all of these punches, you know, his, his enemies, you know, they're throwing all kind of punches at him. He's avoiding all the punches. Let's say it's one guy for this example. He's avoiding all of his punches. And then after he says to the guy, you're done, he throws one punch and the fight is over with. This is basically what we've seen this past weekend with Guillermo Rigondeaux. This is the reason why he is the most avoided, the most feared. You know, some people will say, hey, Dante, but what about Gennady Golovkin? He's avoided. No one wants to fight him. No, you can't compare the level of fear that fans have or fighters have for Guillermo Rigo versus Gennady Golovkin. See, because when it comes to Gennady Golovkin, there are actual fighters and relevant fighters that are actually calling out Golovkin. There is no one calling out Guillermo Rigondeaux. And when it comes to Golovkin, you even have smaller fighters calling out Golovkin, like Edislandi Lara. Could you guys imagine a smaller fighter in a lower weight class calling out Guillermo Rigondeaux? Of course you can't imagine it because it hasn't happened and it will not happen. I mean, Roman Gonzalez, he just moved up in weight and um. I give him uh, props for moving up in weight because as you guys know now, a lot of big fighters, a lot of big punchers, they haven't moved up in weight yet. Fighters like Gennady Golovkin, fighters like Canelo Alvarez. I believe Golovkin eventually, well, at least I'm hoping he will move up eventually, even though he just made a statement saying uh, that he doesn't plan to move up at all, at least not right now, until he unifies the belts. And if he knows that BJ Saunders is never going to fight him 
what is Golovkin really saying? Is that a way for him to say, well, if BJ Saunders never fights me, I guess I'm stuck at the middleweight division for the rest of my life. But we already know before the uh, before he said that he wasn't going to move up, he was planning on moving up to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Carl Froch. So Golovkin has fighters calling him out. There is no one calling out Guillermo Rigondeaux. Like I said, Roman Gonzalez is moving up in weight. Roman Gonzalez has never mentioned Guillermo Rigondeaux's uh, name. Never mentioned his name. And he doesn't plan on doing it anytime soon. You know, it's so ironic how, once again, fans, they try to use the silliest excuses for what why they personally don't like fighters like Guillermo Rigondeaux, Andre Ward. They make these silly-ass excuses. And really what they're trying to do is they're trying to justify their personal hate. And they're trying to basically cover up their guilt. Because they know if they just say, I hate him for no reason, then they have to look at themselves in a mirror. But if they, if they come up with an excuse, then that makes them deal with their type of personal guilt. Yeah, that's the reason. See, yeah, see, I'm not racist. See, I'm not a bad person. I'm not this. That's the reason why, you know, I don't like him. I knew there was some reason why I didn't like him. This is what they're saying to themselves, right? But then when you say, I don't like Rigo because he doesn't get knockouts, and then the majority of his last four fights were pretty much knockouts, what do you say then? You can't call him boring because Rigo versus Amagaza was candidate for fight of the year. Rigo was fighting against a guy damn near 20 pounds bigger than him, about five or six inches taller than him. They went toe to toe, Rigo got knocked down in the fight, rallied back and stopped Amagaza. Then he comes back two fights later and he knocks out someone with one single punch. Technically knocks him out in two rounds. And Dickens was not a bum. This was a good fighter. No different than the Andre Ward situation. Do you guys know you actually have fans? Can you believe I should say? You actually have fans that were using the excuse of why they hate Andre Ward so much. Why? Because he was inactive. Oh. That's why you hated this man's guts. That's why you're posting. Fuck you Ward. You son of a bitch. You this. He's a piece of shit. The inactive bum bitch. You were saying all of those things. You were you hated this man so much. You're biting your lip till it bleeds because you're so angry that this man is inactive. Does that make any damn sense? Of course it doesn't. And soon as this man becomes extremely active, guess what? That same fan still doesn't like Andre Ward. It's therapeutic for them to come up with silly ass excuses because they are trying to avoid the feeling of guilt because they know deep down what they really are but they're trying to convince themselves that they're not racist they're not this they're not that that's all it is it's therapeutic it's therapy for them you know the boxing world all the way from traditional boxing fans to boxing fans that are members of the media. Everyone, at least the decafs, they have tried their best to sweep Guillermo Rigondeaux underneath the rug. They have tried to make this man as irrelevant as possible because he is a threat. 
I said it a long time ago and I'll keep saying it. They can hate the shit out of Guillermo Rigondeaux. They could try to make him as, as irrelevant as possible, but at the end of the day, as long as Guillermo Rigondeaux, he keeps winning, he will remain relevant. You could sit over here and you could try to destroy Rigo's name financially or socially. But you cannot stop what he does once he gets in that ring. And I truly believe that Guillermo Rigondeaux, his star is going to get brighter and brighter as his career progresses. So I look forward to seeing another impressive performance by Guillermo Rigondeaux. And that's pretty much all I got for now. I'm on to the next one. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.